Welcome to Son of the Most High Channel. All praises to the Most High Yahuwah. I'm Brother Jedaniah, and I appreciate y'all tuning in to my channel. Let us return to our original heritage and culture of the Second Covenant in Yahusha. Hallelujah. All right, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, all who pick up that good book and read it from front to back, let's get an understanding on the new covenant, or let's just say the second covenant, brothers and sisters. So, 90 plus percent of those pick up the book really don't know what the new covenant is and what it encompasses. So let us go to Jeremiah chapter 31 and let's read what is the um, new covenant. It's real easy, it's real simple brothers and sisters and we got to do a little homework. And I got a couple of charts to show you down here, as you can see. We're going to get to those in a moment. But Jeremiah 31 and 31 says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahuwah. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahuwah. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, No, Yahuwah, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahuwah. For I will forgive their sins, their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. There you have it. This new covenant is the putting of the law in the minds and hearts of his people brothers and sisters real simple real easy but we need to take a look at this word new right here let's go see what that means in the hebrew so you come over here this word new mean hadassah hadassah but you click on Strong's, the Strong's word here, 2319, it means new. Hadash. Hadash. Some would say Kadash with a K. Kadash. Some would count that C as silent, as Hadash. But let's go with the Kadash. So it means new, right? Well, that's not all it means. Let's go back one more to 2318. Same word, right? Hadash. Kadash means to renew, repair. Renew, repair. Renew, renewed, repair, restore, restored. So when you actually come back here and you read it correctly with the Most High saying, I will make a renewed, restored, repaired covenant. So what was wrong with the covenant he gave Moses? Well, it had a couple of flaws, y'all. And the flaw was the priesthood. 
and it was the sacrifice of sin of the you know sacrifice of the bulls and goats for sin that was the two main issues with the covenant given to Moses for those things were temporary to appease the most high until Shiloh come or the Messiah comes and when the Messiah come he would renew restore repair this covenant that was made between the father and Yahshua Israel so when you fix this word with all the meanings right here the true meanings of this it opens up the door to true understanding on why the apostles such as James, John, Peter, even Paul all followed the law, statutes, and commandments even after the death, death of the Messiah on that tree or cross as some of you would say. It makes sense now why they made a difference between clean and unclean food. Why they continued to do the feast days of the Father. Because these are the righteous ways of the Father. They weren't done away with. Nothing that is righteously given to us is done away with. It was those two main points made in Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews 7. Uh, here we go. 7. And we're going to get to those charts in a minute. So the priesthood itself was changed to a priesthood of Melchizedek. When the Most High says that um, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So now that this priesthood was changed, there's also a necessity, a change also of the law. Right here, for he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So the priesthood changed from the Levitical priesthood and the Aaron high priesthood to, well, mostly it, the high priesthood changed from Aaron and his sons being the high priest to Yahusha being the high priest. The Levitical, um, the, the Levites still retain their role as being priests of the Most High. But the, um, the priesthood changed from, the high priesthood changed from the Aaron and his sons to Yahusha, the Messiah. So, and that's what this here pretty much is explaining right here. And then you go into chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 8. It, it talks about, um, the first covenant and the Messiah being the mediator of a better covenant uh, uh, established upon better promises so when you see covenant here mediator of a better covenant it's talking about a renewed restored repaired covenant with better promises and what are those better promises the Messiah becoming a high spiritual priest from above and him becoming the final sacrifice for our sin therefore defeating death forever for us brothers and sisters and again right here it talks about the um, pretty much repeats the same thing we just read in Jeremiah 31 All the way down to here. So, this new covenant, this new repaired, 
restored, renewed covenant is the first covenant with all the changes, brothers and sisters. And then again, you can go back and reread Acts and on forward and uh, get understanding of why did the apostles filled with the Most High Spirit, a set apart spirit in them, filled with power, continue to do the things that are in what y'all would call the Old Testament, the, the Torah and Tanakh. Why did they continue to do those things? Because all those righteous things were still valid. And someone came along and changed some stuff. But before we talk about that, let's go to this chart here to get a better explanation or a, a more, a little bit more breakdown. So in the beginning, there was Yahweh, Yahusha, and the angels, Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve was given the heavenly heritage and culture back then. They walked with Yah. They obeyed his voice. And they had direct teaching from Yahweh. Then the separation took place, of course, and the teachings was through Yahusha, the messengers, and the prophets, and whoever else the Most High used to get the righteous, his heavenly heritage and culture uh, through to them. So a covenant was made with Noah, a covenant with Abraham, circumcision of the flesh. Uh, the, there was a Melchizedek priesthood at that time. There was a covenant with Jacob and Yahshuaal, I mean, who became Yahshuaal. And, and Yah was lost, passed from Adam to Seth, Jared, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Of course, there's more people in between, but I just quick little breakdown. So, then came Moses. Most High called Moses that he make a, a more complete covenant. So, uh, he chose the nation of Yasharal, the twelve sons of Jacob to make that covenant with and he gave them his heavenly heritage and culture and now it came with a little bit more stuff he had his governing laws personal laws dietary laws health laws sacrificial laws ceremonial laws royal laws Levitical priesthood geared toward earth and flesh earthly things and flesh you know that was part of the flaw in uh, sacrifice for sin. And of course, Yahweh's laws given to Moses and Aaron and the sons, the Levites, the prophets and judges, King David and his, and his sons who reigned the rule over um, first the complete kingdom and then Judah and of course you had the northern kingdom was who was just always rebellious and you had disciples uh Yahusha disciples and apostles order of Aaron and Levitical priesthood so after his death as promised by the most high a second covenant a renewed repaired Restored covenant was made between, uh, I mean, through Yahusha to Yahshua and even the grafted in Gentiles. Now, we got to remember Gentiles was always a part of our uh, heritage and culture, even with Abraham's household and Isaac's household and Jacob. I mean, that's all proven in scripts. And the twelve sons had Gentiles, always had Gentiles within their households, all the way through here, even during the times of uh, when we was in the land of Goshen, we had Gentiles with us. So, you get to the second covenant, which is the Heavenly Father's heritage and culture, repaired and restored, and made perfect, y'all. 
and it has all except the sacrifice for sin. No more eternal death because he died and he, for our sins. And when he rose again, he rose with eternal life for us to give to us, which was one of, which is one of the gifts from the heavenly father. And Yahusha became king and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He bring he he was bringing the he's going to bring the two kingdoms together once again. And the covenant is in us to automatically do it, where we become a spiritual man, a spiritual woman, no longer of this flesh. Even though we live in the flesh, we focus on the things that are spirit and his word is spirit so again you have Yahweh's laws which is the heavenly heritage and culture given to Yahshua it's not a religion it's a heavenly heritage or Shemayimly heritage and culture established through Yahusha Given to Yahshuaal and the grafting in Gentiles and all believers. So that's pretty much the general breakdown. And you can go also and read Hebrews chapter 10. I, I recommend you read 7 through 10 yourselves. And this gets into the sacrifices. Um. Uh, not able to take away the sins and he became the final sacrifice for sins that and um it just gives a little bit more breakdown but did all those laws statutes and commandments disappear no but a new religion rose up and said Yes, all of that disappeared when the Messiah died on that tree or cross. And I'm here to tell y'all that is a lie. Now that you know what the second covenant is, it's his laws being placed in us. His laws being placed in us. It's the first covenant renewed, restored, and repaired with better promises, making it perfect. Making that first covenant with Yahshua, given by the hand of Moses, perfected through Yahusha the Messiah. That's what we are supposed to be a part of today. The heavenly heritage and culture established through the Messiah by a second better covenant than the first, which is encompassed by the first covenant, most of the stuff in the first covenant. So right here, you have the Messiah's second covenant established by Yahweh through Yahusha, given to the sons and daughters alike. If, if you one of the sons and daughters of light, you're going to see all this and understand it. You're going to reread and understand exactly uh, how you were deceived by this side over here. And all of you true Yashalites going to stand up and true Gentiles grafted in going to stand up on this side. So let's do a little comparison. So you got a, this religion, Roman Christianity, which does encompass uh, Catholicism as well. Where this entity, God, is mentioned in the book of Enoch, chapter 69, where God real is the one who deceived Eve in a garden. And he's also called the God of war. And now you can understand why the Europeans are always warring against everyone. Why are they always colonizing, conquering, killing, stealing, and destroying? It, now it's making sense, isn't it? Their religion 
when, when they took our books, they, they put a different mindset, a different lens to read our book through rather than this lens. We've been reading through this lens and this ideology was planted in our minds from birth from our parents. We're these entities here is the one we worship and you got this pretty Caucasian Roman European man over here when the Messiah don't even have that type of description. He he was not a man to look at. They say he wasn't a pretty man to look at. That someone would desire him like that. But what did they give you? They gave you what you want. What your itching ears needed to hear and see over here. And therefore, we were sons of darkness on this side, y'all. Sons and daughters of darkness with the Christians and the, the Jewish people, Israeli, and also Islam. Sons of darkness and all the other religions. But we're going to stick with, with this for right now. So they gave you sun worship on the first day of the week. It's not written nowhere in the scriptures. But the Most High or His Son said that the Son's day of worship shall now be the Most High's Sabbath day, day of rest. It's not there. It's only one of those popes who stood up and said, this is our mark of authority that everyone shall uh, worship on Sunday. That's it. But over here on the Most High side, we have the Sabbath day worship on the seventh day, which was instituted from the very beginning and given to us through the hand of Moses and then reinstituted through the hand of Yahusha in the second covenant. So again, you have this Caucasian white man named Jesus who turns you away from the way of life. But over here you have the dark-skinned, melanated, woolly-haired, black Yahusha, not-so-pretty man. All this is written. This is not written. So you have the Jewish people brought into Germany, but, well, brought to the camps, from Germany and other places through truck and train. Not written in the scriptures, but in the scriptures you have the real Jews sold into slavery on ships, the Israelites, and put on put underneath those curses in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. Again, you have the white Jewish Israelis versus the black Yashualites. They were all Negroes. All 12 tribes. All Negroes scattered around, y'all. So, you have the Easter third Sunday in April. And then you got the Passover the first month, the 14th day. It's which is right. <laughs> this is written. I could find this all day long. But I can't find this in scripts. Who instituted the third Sunday. In April. As a day to celebrate the Messiah's. Rising. You have the death on the cross on Friday. That's on this side. But we have the death of. Of the Messiah on the tree in the middle of the week. In the middle of the week. You have him raised on the first day of the week. And yes, he's where he raised on the first day of the week. This is the only thing that lines up over here on this side that's actually in the scriptures. The rest of this ain't in there. You have him in the grave two days and one night if he died on Friday. It rose on the first Sunday, for Sunday morning. That's two nights and one day. But over here, this lines up. 
He was in the grave for three days, three nights. He died in the middle of the week and rose on Saturday. Lines up with scripts. Over here, yeah, the law is not good to do. It puts what they call grace to shame if you did the law. But over here, we know that the laws is good to do, good to follow because they're in our minds and hard to do them now through the second covenant established by the Messiah. Over here, you have the United Nations and Brit, Brit, the Brits and America who brought the Israelis back to their land. But in the scriptures, it tells you that Yahusha brings the Israelites or Yahshalites back to their land himself. When he returns, he's going to do this. Most High ain't said nowhere in the world in, in that book that he's going to have other nations bring them back. But you can find this written right here. Then you have other such things such as the calendar begins in January when everything dies in the winter. On this side, on the Roman Christian side, but over here on the Most High's Second Covenant side, his calendar begins in the spring, y'all. Where everything springs to life. It's all scripture and life on this side. It's all death and lies over here, except for this one thing. So you have man's pagan holidays celebrated over here. And, but over here we have the Father's Feast Days, even where Peter, Paul, James, and John did the feast days, y'all, after the Messiah's death. Over here, you have the covenant laws, statutes, and commandments done away with, gone. It's an evil thing. I heard people frown up. Oh, no, nah, man, I ain't doing them laws, man, all them laws. Like... Frowned up, filled with darkness. Filled with indignation against the Most High. But over here we rejoice in the covenant laws, statutes, and commandments. We know they're not done away with. But they have changes, better changes in the priesthood. And the spirit of Almighty Yah is put in you. That you may walk after these things that rolled right into the second covenant, brothers and sisters. And the second covenant is the Most High's Shemayimli or Heavenly Heritage and Culture given to you to walk after and to live in and to govern you. It's his governing ways, his personal ways, his diet ways, his health ways, his sacrificial ways, his ceremonial ways, his royal ways, his, his royal High priesthood, spiritual priesthood, building a new spiritual man and woman through a renewed, repaired, restored covenant. Hallelujah. I hope y'all got a good understanding. And you'll be able to go back and reread what you need to reread to open your own eyes. To exactly what is this second covenant of promise. And if you still can't see it after this. Then this side done its job well. And Hashatan has you. And you've been turned over to idol worship. On this side, they don't mind if you have images of a false messiah on your wall or made of stone, a statue of him or a cross, a wooden cross with, with the body of him hanging on there or that Caucasian looking European dude hanging on that, that cross. This side doesn't mind you breaking the Ten Commandments because you're breaking them up. The first two commandments. When you do those things. And that's idolatry. I-D-O-L. 
T R Y idolatry against the Heavenly Father. This sight absolutely promotes the breaking of His laws, statutes, and commandments. We uphold it on this side. This side tears it down and does away with it. And takes his name in vain and does away with his Sabbath day. Which the scriptures say is a sign between us and him. We on this side know that the Sabbath day is a sign between us and him. As the sons and daughters of light, the sons and daughters of darkness don't see nothing wrong with nothing, none of this. And that's why they're so filled. This side is filled with so many denominations and all that mass confusion on this side. But this side, we have one Messiah, one way to go by that's given to us. We are not confused. We are sure with the heavenly heritage and culture on this side. Over here, you got Baptists and Methodists and Seventh-day Adventists, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses and Latter-day Saints and, and uh, non-denominational. You know, just so much confusing. Some people just throwing up their hands saying, oh, I'm just non-denominational. I was just like that, non-denominational, all the way up until I found the real Most High and the real Son. Well, let me put it this way. He found me. He called me. And as the scriptures say, he will reveal himself to you, and he revealed himself to me. Him and his son. So you will experience. Cleansing and purging by the Messiah. Preparing you for that day to be a bride. But first you must have faith. In the father's. Saving. Redemption. Redemption. What some would say saving grace. He wants you to come back to you. To restore you back to where you was and better. For you will be a. Shemayimly or heavenly being now. Rebirthed. Reborn through Yahusha. And have a body like him. One such as the uh, the angels above, the messengers above. You'll be as them, shining bright with the light of Almighty Yahweh. And you enter the kingdom because you had faith and you believed in his word and you found it to be true in your mind and your heart. And you practice those things. You practice your faith. You put your faith to work in your life. And the Father found you worthy to be called a son and daughter of light. Because of your faith saved you. Your faith alone is what the Most High saw. And he imparted his spirit into you. Then comes those works of righteousness. Learning how to walk. Learning how to govern yourself. With the royal laws. Of the most high. The heavenly. Taking on the heavenly heritage and culture. That exists with the Most High above, which He gave to us below, down here. Heavenly heritage and culture, y'all. Walk in it and endure to the end and continue to improve yourselves 
until you reach that perfection. And perfection, according to the scriptures, means maturity. Remember that. Don't be fooled. It means mature. David was called perfect, right? Didn't he sin? It's because he matured after he, he messed up a few times. But he matured. There was many that walked that end up becoming perfect because they matured by faith and belief in the Father's laws, statutes, and commandments. And that when they walked in them, they became habit over time. And, and, and all those sins just keep falling away until you, you're just used to doing all righteousness. That's how that works. You mature in the faith. But once you do mature in the faith and you, you practicing all that goodness and righteousness and you happen to backslide at that moment, there will be no more sacrifice for sin for you. That's at that time. But in between, his mercy is upon you that you may learn and grow into a mature man, a mature, mature woman. Then, it's then, if you fall backwards, that's when um Second Peter chapter two kicks in, verses uh what twenty through twenty two kicks in. The dog goes back to his vomit. <laughs> I mean, it's over, pretty much. At that moment, oops, Second Peter, it's over after that, y'all. That's what this means right here. Read it. If you go right back to the pollution after you have escaped it, this means you, you were made perfect. You were matured in the word. If you're not mature in the word right now, don't be going off on yourself and, and saying to yourself, oh, no, no, I'm going to the lake of fire. Because you haven't matured yet. You have to reach that maturity and be walking in it for a time. And then if you end up in Motel Hell, room 66 or 666. And you know what you're doing. You know it's, and you forsake that cold ass spirit that's in you, working with you. That spirit gonna leave you, it won't come back. That's what that means, brothers and sisters. So I just wanted to cover that perfectness. Because a lot of people thinking it's that other perfect where uh you're looking at somebody saying nobody's perfect, because you know the 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 assemblies, the sun worshiping assemblies that we left. Is using that as their uh, sin card, so to speak. Their license to sin. Well, nobody's perfect. Nobody can be perfect. Yes, you can. If you understand the biblical meaning of the word perfect. You can reach perfection. You can reach maturity. All right, I hope y'all got some understanding. I hope you understand what the second covenant is. Do share this video, brothers and sisters. Now, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank y'all for watching 
be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell and give me a thumbs up and definitely share this video. Y'all know where to leave those comments, but email me if you have any questions. And with that, I'm going to say, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah.